Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds. Let's get into these two colonies right here. I've got a bunch of them. Laurel and I made about 30 splits a month and a half ago with queen cells in one round, and then we followed up with about 120 more, and that was just in about a two-week period. But there's a lot of variables. When you have 120 queens, what you find is that you get a bunch of them that look fantastic if the weather's good, but there's certain things that happen we just don't know and I had a queen the other day and she was laying 50 percent it wasn't in this group but it was a later group her sisters were just doing awesome bricks of brood but she was doing about 50 percent drones and 50 percent worker brood I don't know what was quite going on but obviously something wasn't right so we had to replace her and all that kind of stuff so not only do we have to worry about things like that but we also want to make sure are they drawing this foundation out and they're not backfilling and going to swarm on us because a good strong queen during a good honey flow can fill up space quite a bit. So let's go ahead and dive down to the bottom chamber and then we'll inspect this one across the way in just a second. All right, that's still pretty light. So as you can see, we have a foundation right here and that was we dropped that down below because we brought up this comb right here it had eggs in it at the time to help lure those bees up and bees do not like having eggs and young larvae without having resources right next door so that really makes them want to draw comb next to that frame and it works really good and i have waxed all of these combs myself or these foundations rather because they were getting old. They have been sitting for some of them almost two years and the wax just gets dry on them. And I really am passionate about this. You see some of these companies, especially like the ones at the big box stores that really don't know anything about bees. And I'm not talking like Man Lake Big Box. I'm talking like Tractor Supply, Sam's Club had some kits. And these things come from China. China's known for mixing paraffin with the beeswax and then putting a thin coat on your foundation. If you're a hobby beekeeper, you start like that, you buy a nuke from Laurel and I, and it's strong and it's ready to grow immediately, and they don't take to that foundation and start drawing it, and it's a good honey flow where you're feeding a lot, they're going to backfill and they're going to swarm. doesn't matter if they're five frames. I'm a big fan of having good wax on the foundations. It makes a big difference. This is a wonderful frame of honey right here. We haven't fed these splits at all since we made them up because we made them at the about a week or two into the main honey flow and so this is all just free bees from nature you can't beat it let's see how that queen's laying down in here well i really like the look of that right there even though it's not a perfect frame of brew that's because there's a lot of bee bread down in here that's where they've taken the pollen and they're fermenting it and making it for a, a long-term uh, preserved product because they're going to need that in tennessee most of mm -hmm. summer we do not have good nutritious pollen coming in in my region. This is an older frame and they have converted a lot of this over here to drone comb. That's pretty interesting. Got to have drones too, especially if they're from these good genetics that we like. Something that I am going to mention that it's really best not to have your bees in full shade like this. We just ran out of room over here. I don't know how many hives have gone through this yard this year. At least 120 minimum. A lot of those have gone out. I've still got probably 60 something over here. It's too many. Another frame of bee bread and food right here. A little bit of brood. Not a lot. That nutrition is going to be so valuable because we are going to be hitting robbing season within the next 10 days. I know our season pretty well after 21 years. It's about that time, not looking forward to it. That's what I want to see right there. Again, just a nice, clean looking cups, uh, or caps, excuse me. So what I mean by that, as, as, as a beekeeper, when you see just such uniform color, they're kind of humped over just slightly. Those look healthy. That means this colony is in good shape. And when you start seeing colonies that have problems, you start seeing not only brood that's more scattered, but you also see cappings that look slightly discolored and don't look quite as good. It's not something that you can teach through a YouTube video or someone that can really explain to you, but just pay attention to those little details. Over time, you'll teach yourself. Mm -hmm. 
that's really tells you everything you need to know right there. That's a lot of B power. So we don't really need to check this hive anymore. They are looking great. Uh, we are going to throw that next box back on. What a girl. I just love raising my own queens and my own splits for a lot of reasons. But they are so much better. It's hard to beat nature at its own game when it comes to raising queens in small quantities. So I'm going to push this on over. And ooh, what a heavy frame of food right there. Sometimes there's so, so many bees on these things and the frames get fat on the edge. I'll shake the bees off and we will drop it down in afterwards because we try not to crush any more bees than we have to, but it does happen. Well, one thing I want to show real quick, I can see this very easily myself with this foundation that we dropped down in here to replace that comb that we brought up. They've already drawn it out quite well. And that's because we put a good fresh coat of wax and that queen is laying great. Doesn't hurt that there's some nectar coming in from sumac trees right now. Maybe a little bit of, uh, definitely some, a little bit of clover coming in and maybe some basswood. Let's check this second box. This will be a quick one. So when they get about seven to eight frames strong, especially if the weather's warm, especially if the weather's warm, when they get about six and a half to seven frames strong, we'll go ahead and pull up that frame of eggs or larvae up into the second box and we'll add foundations and we'll drop that one foundation below. And this works really good because we don't want those bees to have to draw it immediately. It's like, oh my goodness, we filled up the bottom box, let's throw a second one on. By the time they start drawing this good, they might have brought in 10 pounds of nectar in one day during a good flow. If this is not drawn, that's all going down here. Queen runs out of room, they're swarming. That's no good. Combs are very valuable. And even though our honey flow is just about over, we're gonna be showing you some videos on how we get thousands of combs drawn during our dearth period. There's some momentum still left from the flow that if you have a good queen in there and everything's in good shape, they'll be just fine. So this is the frame that we brought up to lure them up into this second box and get them to draw. And there's quite a few bees on it. There's actually not as, well, there is some brew. They're starting to cap it over in there and some larvae. Honestly, the light, the lighting might, might be worse for me than it is for you guys. But anyhow, this looks like a good start up here because this is what I want to see. Are they expanding out? Are they going to create room? And boy, that looks nice right there. So I don't see any resources, but they are drawing this. I'm wondering if the queen has started laying up here anywhere yet. So they've got this frame over here started as well. About halfway done on that side. I'm hoping to see some eggs. That really gets it going. Um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and shake this off for you guys. And you can see down into there all the eggs that the queen is laying. Boy, that helps prevent swarming right there. It's easier to prevent swarms this time of the year because there's not as much pollen coming in. Swarming really is difficult in late March, April, and early May because we have just so much pollen coming in and sometimes so much nectar at the same time. Queens are laying so hard they just can't hardly keep up. So I'm going to put this hive back together. And one again, I'm just going to say one more time, a good coat of beeswax on your foundations makes a big big difference. Quality of wax is important too. Some of the companies use hard, dark wax. You know, we, we use wax from our own bees and that comes from honey extraction. So I went ahead and threw this super on top to some foundations. They've started drawing it a little bit as well. Not a lot. I had one of the combs they'd already started drawing out last year and I just recoded the other frames and seeing what they're doing. So that's awesome. They're already filling that with some honey. We won't extract this, but I'll probably put an excluder on pretty soon so she doesn't come up here and start laying. All right, let's get into the next hive. And 
I'm going to throw this back on. These bees have a really good disposition for it being so dark. I imagine once the honey flow ends, that's going to change a little bit. So let's see what this sister colony is up to. I just love it. Okay. You can see where they propolize that all down. That's good though. Holy smokes. I see drawn comb a little bit on this edge one. And drawn combs all the way there. We might need to add another one. Honestly, my plan is to, if we can keep these queens going forward and very healthy, and we can with just a little bit of work, we are going to put another box of foundations on this hive right here, and possibly that one, and the dozens of other ones just like it. And that's how we get them drawn, so our dearth will start in 10 days. But if I put another box on this, and this queen still got all that momentum, I'm even going to sneak a pollen patty in there, even though they say you can't do it in Tennessee. And then I'm going to feed them some thin sugar syrup. And we are going to keep this puppy rolling all the way into August. And I'm going to draw a whole other box of foundation. I'm going to get 20 frames of foundation off of this hive this year. That's how we have plenty of comb. And that stuff makes a big difference. Almost as valuable as the bees are themselves to the profitable minded beekeeper. Or the beekeeper just want to keep the bees from swarming. This is the edge frame. It's totally time to give this hive another box of foundation. All we need to do is find a frame of eggs and just pull it up into that extra box and drop a foundation on the edge. Wow, I just love this. All right, we're just going to head right on into the center of the brood nest. And oh yeah, baby. So we have capped brood, we have uncapped brood. We have some honey down in there as well. And what a beautiful thing to get some young combs, to be able to make more splits in the future, to be able to keep the hive healthy. And combs do help keep the hive healthy. It's like the liver of the colony, it absorbs a lot of stuff. You know, so I feel like being in the country like I am, I don't have a lot of commercial agriculture. I've got cows. So that's good for me. So I don't have to worry about a lot of pesticides and stuff. So I've kept combs longer than a decade before. I get a lot of people that get very upset with me over this, but I don't have a problem with it. Um, I would guess because we are so decent at making our own combs and making a lot of them, I doubt our average comb age is over three to four years, max. But before we knew how to do that, and also we were growing really fast and constantly just growing, growing, growing. We had some combs that were, I think the oldest one I ever had was 15 or 16 years old. I never saw any issues with that, but you know, I'm not dumping antibiotics or Apistan or anything like that, Kumafos, uh, Fluvalinate, that stuff builds up. So there's a cup over here and I just opened it up. There was nothing in it. If you see cups in the hive, that's very normal. Not a problem at all. What a girl. But yes, we've got to get another box of foundation on these things because for one, why not? And two, they might backfill and run out of room and start building some swarm cells. They are backfilling a little bit. You see all that in between the brood, all that Honey, that's really not ideal. Ideal situation, if the queen had the opportunity, this would be almost solid brood. You'd have a little bit of bee bread up there and a, a ring of honey. And then if you were gonna have a lot of honey, that would be in boxes up above. And that's how bees naturally wanna do if they have the room for it. Wow, this is awesome. What a great hive. I don't really need to go down to that bottom box at all. All I wanna do is find a frame of foundation that has been converted into eggs and stuff like that. This is, I think any of these would work. They are wanting to draw fast. This box has been on here no more than two weeks. It's hard to keep a good queen down. This is perfect. There's eggs down in there. It's yellow foundation, so I can't hardly see it, but I can barely see it. 
This, yes, this would be the frame to pull up. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to throw that box on. I'm going to drop a foundation. I'll drop it over here because we don't want to drop it down in here where they're just going to make these fat. We'll put it on the edge. We'll pull this one up. And then if the flow stops, we are going to feed probably two gallons of one to one a week until we get that box drawn. And then we're going to keep feeding until I have at least Oh, I'd say six or seven of these full. If I've got three deep boxes, I definitely want six or seven of these full of sugar syrup or honey. And we won't be harvesting from this hive this year, but who's to say we don't split from it again? You take a strong, powerful colony like this, we have some mating nukes that have about two frames of brood right now with a, a young queen. We could take a f two or three frames of brood and some of these extra combs of food plug that queen in and now we have a nice strong colony and we've helped draw the combs with this hive. That's how we're able to be sustainable. We lose bees, it's part of the game's agriculture, but we always plan for that and it's a lot of fun. I, I hope you've learned a few things from this video. This is something that took me years to figure out and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your season. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll see you in the next video.